Welcome to our course series for system design. I am BitMagicBot, and in this video, we will learn about master slave architecture in system design. Master slave architecture is an important technique to avoid a single point of failure in databases and prevent loss of key information. It plays an important role in making any system highly available and consistent. In this video, we will talk about all the concepts, advantages, and challenges that come along with designing a master slave architecture for a system. Let's dig deep to understand master slave architecture. In this video, we will learn about what is master slave architecture. What are its applications? What does it solve? And why is it required? What are the challenges that come along with this approach? And where should we use it after analyzing the pros and cons associated with it? Let's look at what master slave architecture is. It is fairly common these days for applications to store some form of data to provide a better personalized experience to the end user. The developer needs either RDBMS or any NoSQL database to store this information. The choice of database is based on the number of parameters, like the application's domain and developer's use case. But as the application grows and the number of active users in the system increase, that increases the load on the system as well. In such a scenario, the availability of the system is a major concern which a developer needs to address. Let's consider a scenario where the database fails due to high load or due to some technical issue in the back end. This crash of the database not only will keep our system down for a few hours, but it also affects the reputation of the system and trust made by the end users to use our system services. Well, this is not a good situation to have. So, what could we do to prevent system downtime in case a database crash happens? Well, the answer is master slave architecture. That has to be employed at the database level. Let's dig into it in the detail. Master slave architecture is a fairly simple concept actually. All you need to understand is that there is one master database and there are many slave databases. The master database serves as the keeper of information, so to speak. The true data is kept at the master database, thus writing only occurs there. The data is copied asynchronously to the slaves from the master database. The slaves are typically used when the master fails, or for batch processing, if the clients don't need live data. Master database do the same work, as other replicas, slaves, but an additional task is controllers. In this case, the masters are chosen arbitrarily, between one of these replicas, and if the master fails, then the replicas choose the new master automatically using something similar to rock paper scissors master slave is a way to optimize the io in our application other than using caching and also to avoid the single point of failure in the system so now we know what master slave architecture is let's understand what is this used for consider a scenario where a site receives a lot of traffic and the only available database is one master it will be overloaded with read and write requests making the entire system slow for everyone on the site. Master slave architecture serves the purpose of safeguarding site reliability. It provides a way for the system to apply writes on the master database and reads are distributed among slave databases. Since most of the systems are read heavy, this eventually smoothens up the traffic. Suppose we only have a master database. In case of the database server crash, we lose all the data and the system will go down until we recover from this incident. In the worst case scenario, the database server might not be able to store the data, so the data is lost forever, which is disastrous to any production application. The master slave architecture provides us a cover in conditions where database crashes. Slaves can choose a new master among themselves and thus prevent the system from going down. Well, now we know that master slave architecture has many advantages. It provides resilience, availability, traffic smoothening, and much more. So this should be a go-to option always, right? Not really. Master slave architecture has its own set of challenges as well. Let's have a look at them. Let's review the challenges that come along while employing master slave architecture. What do you do when you have a failed replication? You need to take care of these cases with extreme caution. How long does the synchronization between the master database and slave database should take. You need to estimate this time based on your application design. 
Wouldn't Redis suffice? Using Redis, may solve the problems which master-slave architecture solves, but not in all cases. Why should you bother to use master-slave in the first place? Now that we have understood the challenges, behind this architecture, let's understand, when using this will make more sense to our system design. Master-slave architecture needs to be used, where the system needs to be highly consistent and available, and where data persistence is very important. It also works as the load balancer for the database server, when it is overwhelmed with the read requests. While, using Redis Cache may also fix this problem, but using it, will be a costly affair, and will not be useful for applications, where there are many non-relational read requests, hence will require a large cache size, for efficient operations. Data synchronization issues between master and slave servers, should be taken care of, by the use of write-ahead logs, that will have a history of all database transactions. Constant database server health checks should be performed, to identify and handle the failed replicas, if we decided to go with this approach. Even a master-slave database that employs leader election suffers from several undesirable traits. Applications must understand the database topology for your master-slave design. Data partitions must be carefully planned and master-slave architecture should take care of it. A failover, dramatically increases the complexity of the system in general, and especially so for multi-site databases. Adding capacity, requires reshuffling data with the potential for downtime. Clearly, master-slave architecture has much to offer. But, we need to keep the challenges in mind, while employing this technique in our system, and evaluate whether our system will perform better, in the presence of it. With this, we are done with this topic. Best of luck and happy designing.